My wife and I were right about to leave our local animal shelter, empty-handed again because everything seemed to be spoken for, when the lady who had been showing us around said, actually, hold on a minute, we do have one more cat. Um, it just came in. It's a Siamese cat, actually, but it's a feral cat. And she went on to explain that a feral cat lives in the wild, uh, they're not domesticated with people, and in many cases, they can't be domesticated into a house cat. But, she said, this cat is still young, about two months old, um, so it's possible that he could be able to adapt. We weren't really sure of the situation, but we wanted to see him, so we followed the lady down this hallway to this back room, and right there in the middle of one of the cages was this tiny Siamese cat. And I'll never forget my wife's first words when she laid eyes on him were literally, I love him. <laughs> he was a beautiful cat, um, but he did look a little sick and he looked a little scared and they told us that he still needed to be defleed and he needed vaccines. But with all that said, my wife and I agreed on the spot that we wanted to adopt this cat. Again, the lady warned us that because he's feral, he might not be able to adapt you know, some feral cats, they just won't be able to tolerate living in a house with people. We thought about it for a moment and we agreed pretty much right away we wanted to adopt this cat. So we told her that and we were all excited. We thought we'd be bringing him home right away. And that's when she said, oh, but wait a second. Are you guys registered with this shelter? Oh, no. We weren't registered with the shelter. It turns out you need to be registered with the shelter where they do a background check and make sure that you'd be able to provide a good home for the cat. That takes a couple weeks to go through and on top of that, we had never previously owned a cat before which we were worried would lower our chance of being approved. So all I could think was surely someone else would get this cat before we could. But we were already feeling attached to this cat so we said we definitely want to adopt him and we asked, can you please hold on to him for us? She said she'd try but couldn't guarantee anything. And with that, we filled out all the forms to register and then all we could do was wait. Now, I'm more of a skeptic by nature, so I was thinking we shouldn't get our hopes up because there was no guarantee we we're gonna get them. Um, my wife, on the other hand, she's more of an optimist, and in her mind, we basically already had him. <laughs> she had everything ready for him. She had food, food bowls, litter, a litter box. I mean, she was so sure we were gonna get this cat. <laughs> we even agreed on a name for him, thinking we were original, <laughs> but also in reference to my favorite chess grandmaster, Simon Williams, our cat's name would be Simon. Meanwhile, my wife started saying things like, this is the only cat for me, I don't want any other cat, so the pressure was really on, so much for tempering our expectations. <laughs> then finally, after about two weeks, we get a call from our animal shelter saying that they had good news, we've been approved, and we could bring our cat home. And in the same breath, and they also rewarned us about the challenges we would face in trying to tame a feral cat into a house cat. So we really didn't know if we'd be able to keep him. And in bringing him home, we felt even more connected to him. So if it didn't work out, it would be a big disappointment. But we got him home and per the shelter's recommendation, we put him only into our bathroom and shut the door. So just one room. Uh, the idea is just so he gets comfortable with his one new area instead of a whole new overwhelming environment. Um, and then eventually we let him venture out a little bit. At the same time, we would go in there and try to get comfortable between him and us. Um, but initially, I mean, he would just hiss at us and kind of hide underneath the toilet. So it wasn't looking good. <laughs> but we had a strategy. We would go in there as often as we could and just show him that we were warm and calm and welcoming of him. And he resisted. For a good few days, he gave every indication that he just didn't like us. <laughs> but we kept trying and we noticed that even though he was skeptical of us, he was also very playful. And then we figured out that he couldn't resist a good string. So we ran with it and we played string with him a lot. And I think that that started to form some amount of bond with him. After about a week, he tentatively started letting us pet him a little bit. And then we let him start venturing out of the bathroom a little bit so we could explore the apartment a little more. And he seemed to be okay with that. But then my wife made a big, bold move, which I didn't expect, but it ended up being a big turning point. She picked Simon up. <laughs> And not only that, she would actually carry him around while holding him close to her chest. And even though he kind of resisted a little at first, you could tell he liked the view up there. And over time, more importantly, he started to really feel safe when we were holding him. So we held him more and more and he liked it more and more. Now I'm not saying that all cats necessarily want to be carried because all cats are different. But for our cat, Simon, looking back, I would say for sure, carrying him seemed to be the inflection point because from that point forward, he just got more and more affectionate towards us. And that is one of the characteristics of a Siamese cat is that once they form a bond with someone that they really trust, they are very affectionate. He started lounging on the couch with us. He would sleep in our bed with us. He would scarf my wife whenever he could. <laughs> he started following us around and he even started playing fetch. <laughs> he also started developing some of his catitude. <laughs> and it was around this time where he concluded that in fact, we were all living in his apartment, not ours. <laughs> and actually that was true. <laughs> and so what it looked like is he demanded food when he wanted it. <laughs> he demanded our attention when he wanted it. <laughs> He sat in between and on us whenever he felt like it, like a king on his throne. <laughs> and he'd walk up and drop a mouse in front of us to let us know that it was time to play fetch. <laughs> We've had Simon for five years now and around my wife and I, he is for the most part a pretty normal cat. 
But around strangers or people he doesn't know, he's super scary still. When people visit, he'll hide either in the basement or underneath the blankets in our bed. But once they leave, he'll do a quick perimeter check and then he goes back to being relaxed again. So as stressful and uncertain as it was to get him, we're super happy and fortunate that it worked out and we were able to keep him. He's a wonderful addition to our family. And in case you're wondering, we still carry Simon all the time and he still loves it.